here I am in Tongass National Forest. I mean, if this isn't as cool as it gets, I don't know where else I'm gonna go to be in a place this beautiful, this wild, this crazy. We've been here a week and we've seen one boat. It's millions and millions of acres. Thousands and thousands of bears live here. And we're the only ones doing it. Public land, on our own, self-guided. Anyone can do it. What you're gonna see here is a continuation of a hunt that last year you saw on On Your Own Adventures. My buddy Joe Tree, he's up here with me. We're bear hunting in Southeast Alaska. Previously, you got to see him multiple stops. Leave our bags here. Close encounter. Fighting the weather. Just like a little On Your Own Adventure. Fighting the tides. This is what a 17-foot tide swing looks like. And finally, he shoots his bear. Okay, I'm gonna take him. Okay. Got him. Real. Yeah, look at that. And I'm so excited, because Joe shot his bear. Congratulations on your first Alaska yeah. black bear, Thanks, Joe. Man. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was awesome. Now, the time has come where you're gonna see the other part of the story. You're gonna see Randy's part of the hunt. You get to do most of the glassing because I'm gonna try to keep us from crashing into a rock pile. If that works for you. Yeah. Challenge-wise, this hunt, compared to most On Your Own Adventures, is up here. Because of the logistics, the remoteness, the weather, everything else. And a lot of people may look at it and say, well, you guys encountered five bears that day, four bears that day. It is not that easy to pull off when you're dealing with tides. I think they would call that the ship of fools there. I chose this remote area because no one comes in here. Why? Because of the tides and everything else. That, all of those aspects have made this on your own adventure one of the most adventuresome hunts we've ever had. This is our fourth or fifth uh, attempt at this. Hopefully one of these times something comes out. The beauty of a hunt like this is Joe and I planned it all, we did it all, we enjoyed it all by ourselves. Hey, it's a bear right over there. Looks like my turn. Like your turn. That looks like, look like a good bear. In my mind, a hunt is maybe five or seven days of hunting, but it's three months of scouting. And a lot of people say, well, how can you scout if you're not there? Well, the scouting I do from my desk gets me so prepared from my computer. I'm learning, I'm on the web, I'm on the internet. I'm, I know an awful lot about that animal, that place, that location, the weather there, everything else before I even get here. We are here, we've got one more day and we're gonna try kill one bear. Right, there's a bear right over there. Right, that shore way over there. Yep. Can't tell how big he is from here, of course. Well, Joe, looks like my turn. Like your turn. Looks like, that looked like a good bear. Yeah, you mind manning the boat? No, I'll stay with the boat. Okay. After the weather screwed us up, after Joe shot his bear, thinking, yeah, we're seeing lots of bears. I'll get this done. Wish me luck. Luck, man. 
going to need it. The added pressure I had was I was still determined I was not going to shoot an immature boar and I was not going to shoot a sow. That's just for conservation, that's what I'm all about. And I'm sitting there looking at this bear, and a lot of thoughts are going through my mind. Randy, this is a golden opportunity. This bear's broadside feeding at 115 yards. But this is really my first day that I get to hunt. Got all day today and after tomorrow. As stupid as this sounds, I've seen two bears bigger than that one. One of them we see every day. That's a good bear. Joe's going to kill me when he sees that I passed on this bank. I had in the back of my mind this one bear we'd seen multiple times, and we hadn't yet got the opportunity to get a shot at him. And in my mind, I was thinking, that's the bear I'm going to shoot, because he was huge. That's a good bear. But I've spent this whole hunt fighting weather, and then the two good days of weather we had, I was focused on Joe getting his bear. I feel like I want to want to milk mine for a little bit. So I'm gonna sneak out of here. If this bear is a regular, I don't want to spook him. I just want to sneak out so that I can come back if I have to. Don't hate me, Joe. He's saved for for another year. Uh, no, for tomorrow or later tonight or whatever. Well, how close did you get? 115 yards. No kidding. Yeah. Oh, I had him dead to right. No kidding. He's not big enough. Well, that's cool, man. Yeah. Thanks for letting me go on that one. Oh, yeah. I wanted to keep hunting. I wanted to spend more time doing this. So I walked away from that bear. And was that the foolish thing to do? Maybe to some. But it's my hunt. I got to define my hunt how I want to do it. And I walked away. I have no regrets for that. Tides are always different, the wind, the rain. Yeah. And then where the bear are, location to where we need to be. Oh, we need the bear yep. to come right there because we know how deep it is, right? Yeah, there. yeah. Or where I shot the one, we know it's deep there. <laughs> <laughs> Last year I was here, I'd beached the boat in this spot, so I knew it was a good deep area. And the water is crystal clear. At six feet, Joe jumps off the bow. <laughs> he completely disappears. <laughs> Joe Treat, the human depth sounder. <laughs> There's someone really dumb. 
we're just buzzing all these bays, going along this coastline. Joe's glassing, I'm glassing. The sun's out, the weather's cleared. I'm thinking, all right, I've got all afternoon, I've got the next morning, I'm gonna find a bear. The better the weather, the more bears we'd seen. We hadn't been out, oh, I'm guessing maybe it was around noon, and I look and there's a bear on the beach. I'm like, holy cow, right here, high noon. <laughs> this is about as good as it gets. We beached the boat, everything's going well. Joe didn't jump in the water this time. I mean, wow, this is gonna happen. The only problem I had was where we could beach the boat, we were almost going downwind towards him. He was downwind from us. Wherever the channel goes, it seems like the wind splits. I'm walking around the corner. I know where that bear is. I marked where that bear would be. I peek around the corner, big pile of like blowing up driftwood and stuff. Look, and there's the bear. There he is, Joey's right there. And I, I eased up to this, this log and I was trying to get a shot, but there was a bunch of brush in front of the bear from there. And there's two limbs in that next tree. I'm gonna have to shoot between two limbs. And I told Joe, if you stay here, I'm gonna drop down on the beach. I'm gonna get behind that rock and I'm gonna get a good rest and I'm gonna shoot this bear. He's a good bear. Joe, I'm gonna go down there. Give me a range when I ask for it. Joe, did he lay down? Yeah, it looks like it. He's flat I on the can, ground. I can just see his head above a stick there. I think he's smelling us. I see him licking, licking in the air. His nose is yeah. in the air. He's gonna get up in a second. Anyone who knows with a bear, you are not gonna fool his nose. You might fool his eyes, you might fool his ears, but you're not gonna fool his nose. Joe, let me know what's that distance right there where he laid down. 264, Randy. I look at Joe, he looks at me, he's like, man, that's a big bear. I'm like, yeah, he's bigger than the bear I walked away from this morning. In my mind, there is no doubt I'm gonna shoot that bear. Yeah, you gotta take him from here. He's gonna smell us. Yeah. I'm laying on my pack, I'm just waiting. All right, calm down, Randy. When this bear stands up and comes towards you, gives you a broadside shot, this game is over. Quick as he steps up, if he starts coming this way, I'm gonna shoot him. And I felt so comfortable with this shot. I've made this shot lots of times. It's a rifle, I, I, I shoot it all the time. The ammo does exactly what I know it's gonna do. So here he comes. I'm gonna take him. Oh, nice shot. Nice shot. The bear spins and he's running a little bit up towards the brush and he stopped for a second. And that rock I wanted to get to blocked me from getting a second shot. The shot felt perfect. I can't shoot him now, he's behind that rock. Anyone who hunts bears knows that if you have a chance, you put a second bullet in. That's just what you do. And I couldn't. The bear is right behind this big rock out there. Is he still there, Joe? No. Nope. I don't see him anywhere. He's in the trees? Yep. Yeah, I think he hit I think he hit him right square in that front shoulder because I, I saw him rear back when right off that shoulder. Yeah, that's where I was aiming. It felt perfect. Look, looked like a good shot to me. I can still see the crosshairs perfectly high on the shoulder of that bear. And that's where the excitement stops and from there it goes downhill let's do this joe let's uh i'm gonna set my pack down here yeah. let's find the blood of where he went in we walk up to where that bear was standing and within a minute there's blood on the rocks here's some blood right here joe right there and there 
We can see where he went into the brush. Bleeding good here. I'm following the blood trail. There's a lot of blood on that. Other than just dropping the bear right there, having a blood trail like this is probably as good as I could have asked for. He went over, there's blood all over the log here going, see right here? And we start following and following and following. And there's just pads of blood just here, 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 here. It's not like spraying like you would see if it was a lung hit or something like that. And instantly that, that caused me some concern. I'm like, man, there should be more blood out to the side based on where I thought I hit him. Some spots, there's lots of blood. Some spots, there's just drops of blood. Oh man, nothing worse than walking through here, trying to find a wounded bear. One, the danger of it, but two, I just feel terrible. I thought it was a perfect hit. By the time we'd got 200 yards, I knew the hit was not what I'd hoped for. So now in my mind, I told Joe, like, you know, I, I, I don't think this was as good a hit as I thought. This is an absolute mess of, of jungle. I mean, it's hands and knees right now. But I gotta keep going. You can't give up on an animal when there's still daylight. It looked like he was heavily favoring his left leg. It, it almost looked, when he would go through mud, that he almost was just walking on three legs. Uh, this is the last place that I saw him. He bedded down right in here. That's the last piece of blood right there that we can find. Now he led us into this wet, swampy area. And uh, he came embedded in this cave right here. But after he left, can't find anything. Anyone who wants knows exactly how I feel. I feel terrible that the animals had to suffer. Bad deal. Stupid. Bear deserved better than what I delivered. climb out here. Oh. I am in the greatest place in the universe, hunting one of God's greatest creatures. Feeling like, like I don't deserve to be here, feeling like I should quit hunting. After a while, you realize the futility of what you're doing, and you've given it every effort you can. So here I am, punching my tag. I'm done. Everyone has a different approach to it, but when I drop blood on an animal, that's the end of it. My tag is it's done. It's the worst experience I've had in my hunting career. I want to share that with you, the viewer, because someday you might have this same experience. It's difficult, and you can say, yeah, it happens, and it does happen, but I hope it doesn't happen to you. think back about how wonderful and beautiful this place has been to me in the last few years and I can't really explain what I was looking for in Alaska. I don't know if I was even really looking for a bear as much as I was looking for the experience of the chase. I was looking for the hunt. I was looking for vastness, wilderness, desolation, isolation. That's what I was looking for in Alaska and I came here and I got it.